Amen. Amen. Well, if you'll open your Bibles back up to Acts 4, we won't be long, but I want to show you some more pictures. I love pictures. The first one I want to show you is of a house. You want to see a house? There it is. Uh, yesterday or the day before, Janet and I drove by this house. It is still at 1230 Shelton Avenue. And in 1924, um, a group of people helped out by another church in our city started Inglewood Baptist Church. So we weren't always in this building. In the late 20s, in 27, 28, we bought this property. And the reason we bought this property is because of where it's positioned. We are on a hill. You can actually see our steeple, um, especially during the wintertime, from a long way off. And in 1928, we built the Fellowship Hall. That saw that was on this property. And we worshiped in the basement, what we now have know as a fellowship hall, for 20 years. In fact, our nickname was Inglewood Baptist Church, the Basement Church. In 1948, we built this building. In 1950, roughly, we built the attached building. And around 1952, we built what was called the children's wing or the part of the other part of the building that is in the u-shape now and then uh, after i arrived we purchased uh, some property uh, that is now our youth building and god has given us a great um, a great history i want to show you another picture there they are those are the, uh, let's see, three, six, nine founding members of Inglewood Baptist Church. Now, ladies, I'm hoping that we'll bring back that kind of dress. Amen. Now, I want to tell you something. Uh, the lady uh, third from the left, your left, that was Miss Janie Elam. Miss Janie Elam was still alive when I came here as pastor in 1995. I had the privilege of preaching her funeral. She lived to be in her 90s. What a great lady. She was fire in her bones, if you remember. She, just a great lady. And um, there, there they were. And um, while that picture is up, uh, somebody was so kind as to, well, Chris Erlinson was, to give me one of these cards about what was going on in 1924. So while you're looking at that, I want to tell you what was going on in 1924 to give you a, a link of just an idea of how long we've been around. Anybody ever had an EKG? The electrocardiogram was invented in 1924. Isn't that awesome? Vladimir Lenin in Russia died and a guy named Stalin. Anybody remember Stalin? Get this. Duke University, you blue haters, was founded in 1924. In 1924, the first Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was held in New York City. Isn't that awesome? On a negative downside, the, the gas chamber was used for the first time as an execution tool. Just for those of you wanting to know that. Woodrow Wilson died in 1924, former president. In sports, you'll love this, the Boston Bruins were the first hockey team to play. Boston Bruins, at oldest, oldest team in the NHL. <laughs> um, Calvin Coolidge was the president, and Charles Dawes was the vice president. Um, the life expectancy in 1924, 54 years. Aren't you glad we've made improvement in that area? Most of you'd be deader than a doornail, <laughs> including me. A new house in 1924 
cost $7,700. A new car on the cheap was $265. Now you could go up, and I have a picture of it, if you really wanted to spend the money, you could go up to the old town cruiser for $950. The average rent, try this on Nashvillians, was $18 a month. Isaac, can we get a witness on that? <laughs> Isaac's paying $4 million a month. A movie ticket was 15 cents. A postage stamp was two cents and it actually got to where it was going. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. A gallon of milk, 54 cents in 1924. Marlon Brando was born, Don Knotts was born, and Jimmy Carter was born in 1924. You might find this interesting. Al Jolson had the top hit, All Alone. Cole Porter was singing, Make Every Day a Holiday. And Fats Waller had one of the top blues songs, Home Alone Blues, all in 1924. I say all that to let you know that we've been around for quite a while. The reason I drove by that house just earlier this week, a couple of days ago, Janet and I, is in, and I... I kind of tripped out. I, I took a picture of it. I didn't, I didn't send it to uh, be put on the, uh, the screens. But it looks pretty much the same way. They've redone the front area. But the question I want to pose to us today, just real briefly, is will we be here in another 95 years? And I know that's, that's a long time to think about, but let me give you this image, okay? Here it is. We are not the whole chain. I told my Sunday school class this this morning. We are not all of the chain. It is, this church has gone through many seasons. Links in the chain. Our job is not to be the whole chain. The version of who we are is not all of what we have been. Nor is it all of what we will be. But our job in this season is to be the strongest link in the historical chain known as Inglewood Baptist Church. So that the next generation will have something stable and firm to latch onto. You've heard the saying, a chain is only as strong as its, say it together, weakest link. And I want us to be, and I am thankful that we are a strong link in the chain but I also don't want us to presume that that we can just say well we've made it 95 years and we'll automatically make it another 95 years that's not the way this works God's promise that the gates of hell shall not overcome the church is a, is a promise in general but it doesn't always come in particular to individual churches that are not faithful and so here's my challenge to us and here's my encouragement my challenge to us is I know that we live in a different era than they did when they started this church there were lost people but they were a little bit more uh, if you will open and receptive to the gospel doesn't mean that there weren't people that resisted the gospel there were but when they started this church they had a vision they had a passion to we see people um, start to church to know Jesus and to be honest with you when I drove by that house and I parked for a minute and Janet's saying don't don't act like you're taking a picture when I'm trying to take a picture so I broke her rule you know, there's nothing more voyeuristic than somebody pull up in front of your house taking pictures. But I, I, I'll be honest with you, I had a moment of envy. I thought, Lord, it'd be great to be back in that house. What was going on in that house? 
what vision, passion, excitement, fear, exhilaration, prayer. You imagine those people got down on their knees and prayed? Not, nine people can't do that. Nine people can't do this. Or can they? And they did. They prayed and they grew and they bought and they invested and they shared and they cared. And out of that taproot came a lot of fruit. There are people today who still need to know Jesus. And I am praying not that we'll go back. We can't go back. I'm, I'm, there was something about taking pictures that they told you not to look happy. That look on Miss Elam's face, she was one of the most joyful people. I don't know what, it, I don't know what that was 100 years ago when they pulled out the camera and said, okay, everybody look dour. Like you, you love Jesus and you're not excited about it. But that wasn't true. I'm not asking for us to go back to the dress or we can't go back and the things that maybe worked back then, methods to reach people. But I am asking us to go back to catch that spirit. They believe the same gospel you believe. There is, we, we can change the building, paint the building, we can change methods, get different outreach. We're going to do that. We're going to do different stuff. But there is only one gospel. There wasn't a different gospel in 1924 than there is in 2019. It is the same gospel. There is no other name given among men under heaven whereby a man or a woman or a boy or a girl must be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. There is only one gospel. And this morning, I'm asking every one of us, those of you who are right in the middle of it, all the stuff we're doing, and those of you who are on the edge, get the uniform on and get in the game. And catch that spirit. They risk money. They risk time. They put themselves out there. They left their churches that they were involved in. And they started Inglewood Baptist Church. And I'm asking us to go back and catch that spirit. And at the same time, I'm asking us to look at the future to know that there are still lost men, women, boys, and girls who don't know Jesus, who need to know Jesus. And they cannot believe unless they hear. And they cannot hear unless we go tell them. And that's our job. And I believe that we can and we will do it. Four quick challenges right from this verse. Acts 4.31. Notice very quickly. It says, and when they had prayed. So I'm going to ask you, I know we've finished, quote unquote, 40 days of prayer. I'm going to ask you to earnestly do what Laura has said. I want to affirm what Star has said. That we actually ask God, God, what do you want us to do? God has, get, you know what God's done in your past through these 40 days? I have a new question. I've come out of 40 days and I've tried, I've been, what, 40 days, what, what did I get out of this? I have a new question that I've put in my equation. And that's this. Why? Are you here? Why am I here? I posed that question in our Sunday school class, and I'm praying. God did not send you here to sit. God sent you here for a purpose. You've got to find out what that is. And maybe what God has sent you here to do is what all of us should be doing. Let's pray. Number two, I want you to notice what it says. And when they had prayed... The place in which they were gathered was shaken. I'm asking God, and I think we ought to ask God, not only why are we here, but I pray that he would shake us. We are, we're way too comfortable. Way too comfortable. And I'm praying for him to disturb our spirit, to stir us. To, to, to stir us, to 
After they prayed, the Lord stirred them. They shook the place. And I believe not only that includes the physical place, I believe they were shaken. Number three. Notice it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, Baptist. I'm as Baptist, Baptist born. I'll be Baptist dead. But I believe the whole counsel of God ain't nothing happening apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. Nothing. You can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. You can't be gifted without the Holy Spirit. You can't bear fruit without the Holy Spirit. You can't live for Jesus without the Holy Spirit. And the Bible commands us in Acts, Ephesians chapter 5, instead of being drunk on wine, get drunk, intoxicated, literally is the comparison, be filled with us of the Holy Spirit. In other words, to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. That God might move us. Finally, notice what it says. They prayed, they were shaken, they were filled, and they spoke. They spoke the word with boldness. They spoke the word with boldness. And that's it. This, brothers and sisters, is the church. This is church. Prayer, which is a form of worship. Being shaken to your core as God speaks to you, filled with the Spirit, and speaking the Word. Speaking the Word. Speaking the Word. There's one more thing about 1924. In 1924, Inglewood Baptist Church came into existence. Can we go back to that house? Mark down the, take, the, mark down the address. Go by, it's, I think it's painted yellow. Isn't it? I think it's painted yellow. It's got a little driveway in front of it. It's got some cars. You know what I've thought about doing? Don't put it past me. I think I'm going to do it. I've decided this morning. I haven't even told my wife that she gets nervous when I say that. I already have a witnessing opportunity at that house. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to trust the Lord. He's going to lay it on my heart. I'm going to walk up to that house on a Saturday when everybody's there. I'm going to knock on the door and I'm going to say, Hey, I know this is really weird. Can I tell you what happened in this house 95 years ago? In this living room, there were some people that started a church. Oh, really? Yeah. You know anything about Jesus? Wouldn't that be great? So here's my invitation. I know we're way past. You don't have a roast in the oven anyway. You're going to go out to eat or something like that. We are, we are stock owners in Las Maracas. Amen. <laughs> Can I get a witness on that? So here's my invitation. Here's my invitation. Every person here who's a member of Inglewood Baptist Church, I'm just going to ask you, let's go to that next picture of the, of the folks there, if you would. Once you look at that, all of them with the Lord now. I especially like the lady on the far right. I don't know what's happening with that hat, but that thing is beautiful, isn't it? And the lone guy there, he's like, what am I doing in this picture right now? Amen. <laughs> but in all of them, and some of you knew them. Some of you knew uh, David Sellers. Probably David. Did you know all those folks? Did you know all, some of them? And uh, just look at their faces. Fears, hopes, and dreams. And here we are. Isn't that great? And so, brothers and sisters, here, here's what we're going to do. And I haven't even told uh, is Keith here. Is he in children? Yeah. Can you go get him? Tell him to let out. Tell him to let the hoodlums out. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a picture today. We're going to take a picture. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to ask us to get up here, and we're going to stand here, and we're going to face this way, and we're going to take a picture. So on to our, let's see, it'd be 100 and, what's 85 plus 85? 190? 170? 
Maybe 95 years from now, they'll look back and say, hey, we're still here. Look at all those people, hopes and dreams of Jesus in their face and in their heart. Amen? I was a part of that. And then here's my second invitation. So the invitation is to get a picture. I don't, you may have not put any makeup on or may have worn your worst clothes. That's okay. You may be a visitor. That's okay. Come on. It, and uh, be a part of the picture. Here's my second invitation. If you're a member here, why aren't you in the game? Just get in the game. Some way. Go to Sunday school class. Just... Get in the game. Pray, give, whatever. Join the choir, that's right. <laughs> Amen. Can I get a witness on that, sister? Here's my third invitation. If you are not a member, if you're not a member of this church, I'm talking to you right now. If you're not a member, you have your membership somewhere else, or you, um, you really have, don't know where you're church membership is, or maybe you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, here's my invitation. While we come and pray, I want you don't, we're not going to point you out necessarily. If you would like to become a member of this church today, we will talk with you. We will pray with you, of course. We'll counsel with you. We'll follow up with you. I have some of you already started those conversations. I want you to come and pray on this side. Come on. Are the kids coming? Are the kids coming? Y'all coming? Man, you look like you're having a rough time. Are you okay? All right, what's your name? Yeah, did you get in trouble today? Okay, good, good. Come on, kids. Can you take a picture for us, Keith? Okay. Yes. Yeah, go get nursery. Somebody go get the nursery. So, if you're not a member, I know this is a really weird way to end a service, isn't it? That's okay, I don't care. So if you would like to become a member, I want you to come and stand in this area. And after we have a season of prayer in our picture, I want you to tell me, I'm coming today and I want, I'm expressing my desire to become a member of this fellowship. I'm moving my membership from another church or maybe I've already been saved and followed the Lord in baptism and, and I haven't done uh, the church I was at doesn't exist anymore or whatever. Or I'm coming and I want to trust Christ as my Savior. Or maybe you've never followed the Lord in baptism like the two ladies that did this morning. Melinda, Crystal, you come, and we will follow up with you. We will counsel with you. You do that, okay? All right? So here's what we're going to do. Uh, Keith, we're going to have them stand up here facing out that way. Is that okay? So, well, we're going to have them face out that way. Can we do that? Yeah, yeah. Can we do that? All right. All right. Everybody stand up. Everybody, guest, come on up this way. I'll move this. We're going to get a picture today. Okay, so come on up. Come on. They, they went to get them. Now, for those of you who are vertically challenged, I want you to stand in the front. The taller's in the back. Can I sell the Up here first so everybody get on the stage and we'll get everybody up here everybody all right hey y'all need to keep moving back keep moving back some people can come back here too up in yeah the some people can get in the choir loft if you need to stand on the floor that's fine but everybody get up on the platform Don't be bashful. Let's go. Let's go. Wagons ho. Everybody get up there. Let's go. Let's get on up there. And...
Okay, that's good. Y'all fill in over there if you can. You're gonna have to get, I hope you wore deodorant because you're gonna have to get in, okay? Here we go. We have a big gap right here in front. Anybody who can kneel down right in there? Now he's turning back around. He gave up on you. Hey, we're still streaming live so you can say hi to everybody on the internet too. Okay. All right. Here's, here's what I need. Here's what I need. Um, hey, I need somebody to bring a chair. Hey, hey. Bob is getting one. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Is there anybody here older than 96? Okay. We're going to put our, our oldest member that's here at present today, we're going to put them right... Can we, get, can we get Marlene up there, Bob, or is she going to sit down here? Let's put her right here. Let's put her right here. And Marlene Hoppy will be right here. Okay, we've got some places right there in front of the keyboard that are, are we good there? Can we get in here? It was a lot easier to do this with nine people. Can you think that? Ronnie, can, is there any way that you can, uh, what, there's some folks behind you. You gonna take a picture for, you gonna take a picture for us, brother? Wayne, are you gonna take a picture? Yeah, I'm Terry Platt with Long Hollow Bath. That's right, man. <laughs> okay. What, what's it look like? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. But now. and then get one a little bit closer into uh, in just a minute. Okay, now what I didn't tell you is we are actually still live streaming right now. So let's, let's take a wave and wave at the camera. Hey, that's, that's forever there, okay? Uh, so we're gonna get a couple of pictures and, uh, and then uh, we's gonna get one back and one close up, so here we go, okay. <laughs> Close as I can be. Hey, now hold it. Now listen. Listen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, 95 years from now, this picture is going to be shown on a, probably that time it'll be teleported across wherever. Technology will have advanced, um, probably be flying in cars. But Lord, the gospel never changes. And I pray that you would help us to get it into our hearts that the good news never changes. You're the same yesterday and today and forever. And the way we reach people and the methods and the ministries will all change. They probably ought to change, Lord, from season to season. But the gospel never does. And I thank you for these precious people. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before you part, if you, if you have come this morning and desire to talk about church membership, I'll explain. You meet me right over here. Second, tonight at 5 o'clock. We're talking about spiritual gifts, blessings, and may God's grace be upon you. Let's give the Lord a praise offering this morning.